Recently I was talking with a younger brother and uh, he brought up a point about Acts chapter 19 verse 37. If you have your King James Bible, go there. Get your Bible. Put down the popcorn or the remote or whatever you're, you know, there. Get your King James Bible. It's important. And uh, he brought this verse up and he made a comment about this. And I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, I think I heard that one time but I completely forgot about this. Very, very good point about this whole thing of church buildings. Um... Just looking up something here. There's a lot of references to the term churches in your New Testament, but uh, where I put my own, oh, there it is. There's a remote. I'm going to show you here in my King James Bible. Uh, this is a Ruckman reference Bible. I'll show you his footnote here in a minute. We have Acts chapter 19, verse 37. You have the story here of these pagans, these worshipers of Diana, of the Ephesians. It says here, I'll start at verse 35. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Diana is just another one of the names for Semiramis. Now the Catholics call her Mary. <coughs> Excuse me. Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against. Is he a believer? Is he a Christian? Or is he a worshiper of this witchcraft goddess here? He's a worshiper of her. He says that they can't be spoken against. You ought to be quiet and, do not, and to do nothing rashly. Now here's the key. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wait a second. You mean to tell me a lost pagan town clerk would use the term churches? And uh, what's he referencing? Hmm? Pagan temples. You remember what I've been saying for a long time? Those of you who are familiar with this ministry... The churches of today are based on Greek Parthenons. Greek Parthenons were where they worshipped false idols, including Diana, Astarte, some of the other goddesses and things of the, of the pagan peoples of the past, the Romans and the Greeks and things like this. So you actually have in your King James Bible... One of the times, I don't know if it's exclusively the only time I was looking there, it looks like most of the other references to the word churches is spoken by Paul, usually, you know, saved people talking about the churches or whatever else. But here is a reference to a lost pagan in the first century who calls their pagan buildings churches. Let's look at Ruckman's uh, note here on this particular passage. This is one of Gary Hudson's ten mistakes in the King James Bible. The Greek word translated robbers of churches here is whatever that is. All the apostates object to the translation because the part of the word translated churches means temples, which is how all the new Bibles translate the word. Of course, none of the new Bibles stick with the Greek all the time. The word for assembly down in verse 41 is which, uh, which is the word for church. No new Bible translated it as church. They all translated it as assembly. The AV has given you an advanced revelation because a female goddess is the subject of worship here. See note on verse 34. The Holy Spirit knew that there would be plenty of churches, not temples, in your country that venerate and pray to a female goddess for a similar thing. See note on Psalm 74 verse 8. Yep. What he's referring to here is the Catholic churches. And they pay, pray to a female deity, Mary. And yes, they do. Mary is the mediatrix. You know, uh, you pray to Mary and Jesus has never said no to Mary, you know, according to Catholic doctrine. So, Mary is the mediatrix between God and, well, Jesus and man. You know, if you want to get right down to it. But interesting, these new versions have taken the word robbers of churches out. They've changed it. And I'm going to show you the proof. Let's go way back here to the Reims New Testament. 
1582, long before the King James Bible even came out. This is the Jesuit attempt at giving people a translation in the English language. Acts chapter 19, verse 37. For ye have brought these men, being neither sacrilegious nor blaspheming your goddess. It's funny they capitalize the goddess there, whereas the King James Bible does not. But neither be, being neither sacrilegious. They don't say about, about uh, not being robbers of churches. Hmm. How interesting. How about the uh, Westcott and Hort? The real deal here, the revised version of 1881. This is the first edition. The real thing. Acts chapter 19. Verse 37. Neither robbers of temples. And then it goes down to talk about the assembly. Just like Ruckman said. Interesting. They don't want you to say churches. They don't want you to know that there's a pagan in the first century using the word churches referring to pagan temples kind of messes things up today doesn't it i mean sooner or later the idolatry has to end you know if you're saved sooner or later the holy spirit's going to get through you to you and say uh i think you ought to get out of that place now you've been in there long enough lying about my words saying that you're a bible believer in all matters of faith and practice and you're not here we have the American Standard Version. This is a, you, can't, you can barely see it there on the spine, American Standard Version, the 1901. Down there in verse 37, robbers of temples or blasphemers of our goddess. Hmm, interesting. And of course they go on to talk about assembly. Called out assembly, you don't call it a church there. In the text, you just translate, make the words say what you want it to mean, say, you know. Here we have the uh, New American Bible. This is a Catholic Bible, St. Joseph edition. I've showed this thing before, but look at that. All seeing eye, it's Lord, <laughs> their Lord, not mine. Acts 19, verse 37. It takes longer to get through the Catholic uh, Old Testament because they have more books. The apocryphal books. Which if the new versions were accurate in their translation, they say it's the best translation, the closest to the Greek. Well, if that was true, then they would have the apocryphal books in them. They don't properly translate uh, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Codices B and Aleph. There you go. These men you have brought here are not temple robbers. Don't want that word churches in there. Might uh, help people figure things out. I didn't even look up some of these things. I'm just, you know, this is, you're seeing it as I'm seeing it. Next we have the old, uh, the messy message. This one's always good for fun, you know, it's about all it's good for. All right, where are we at here? These men you've dragged in here have done nothing to harm either our temple or our goddess. Temple. Well, come on there, Eugene Peterson. You know, there's the... You can see the message. I mean, Eugene Peterson, let's let's update it. We want it to be relevant to the, the local time or the, the modern day and everything else. Why not say churches? I guarantee you more people talk about going to churches than they do going to temples. He's concerned because, you see, the King James Bible is archaic. It's old. And so he has to make it hip and modern and everything else, but he'll use an archaic word like temples rather than churches. Kind of strange, isn't it? Here we have the uh, Common English Bible with Jesuits that sat on the translation team openly. <clears throat> Rob the temple, nor slandered our goddess temple but yet down here they say assembly
How about the uh, complete Jewish Bible? This is an insult to any Jew out there. Acts 19. Because all it is is just another Roman Catholic translation. Is all this stupid thing is. 19 verse 37. Neither rob the temple nor insulted your goddess. Temple. You wouldn't think a Jew would have a problem saying churches. Hmm. Weird. Just weird. But, you know, who am I? I'm just an old, uh, stuck in the mud, you know, King James only, you know, guy. Which, actually, I'm not King James only because you can see right now I have a lot of the new versions and I use them frequently to show how stupid and Roman Catholic they are. So, technically, I'm not King James only. I am a King James Bible believer. That always rattles the, the, the brains of some of these modern versionists. Because, see, when I say I'm a Bible-believing Christian, if they say, well, then you're crazy, I say, well, you don't believe the Bible? Oh, well, of course I do. What I, The Bible that you have in your hands there, is that God's Word? Well, yeah, yes. Is it perfect? No, no, no translation can be inspired. Okay, so then you're saying a book is God's word that you don't believe is perfect. Who does that make you? Poor little things. Acts chapter 19, verse 37. Neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. We have the old uh, nutty idiot version here, the newest one. Unless they came out with a newer one since, you know, what, 2014 or whatever with this thing. Uh, they might have. I don't know. Or was it 2012? I think it might have been 2012. Here we have the uh, Amplified Bible. This one's about as idiotic as the uh, message. These are funny. I just think that you ought to be a little bit more gentle with the way that you talk about these. I'll get that too, you know. It's always funny. You don't have a high enough uh, belief in the Word of God. Respect and reverence for this book. If you say I should be more gentle with these satanic new versions that come from the Vatican. But here we have verse 37 in the uh, Amplified Bible. Um, temple, neither of temple robbers nor of blasphemous speech about our goddess. Again, you know. We brought these men here who are guilty neither of temple robberies nor of blaspheme, blasphemous speech about our goddess. Yeah, it makes it so much easier than the old King James Bible. Man, phew. I'm sure glad it cleared it up. Why don't they have the word churches in there? I'll go next to the uh, English Standard Version. Acts chapter 19. Verse 37. Uh, Neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess. Hmm. How about that? They actually went back to the Jesuit reading of 1582. Modern. Up to date. We are bringing and restoring the... We are... We are what? How they say that? Um making it readable without sacrificing accuracy or whatever else. I, reliability without sacrificing accuracy. They got all these little slow, slogans, you know, best-selling, best-recommended. You know. Yeah, another Vatican vomit version is all the thing is. And how about one of my favorites? Oh, this is a good one. The Catholic Youth Bible. Uh, New Reviled Standard Version. Acts chapter 19, verse 37. Uh, where are we at here? Neither temple robbers nor blasphemers of our goddess. Hmm. So you mean to tell me that all of these new versions over here, all of this stuff, 
uses a more archaic word, temples, than this old King James Bible? Yeah, that'd be right. The King James Bible says that a pagan man in the first century referred to his pagan building, where they worshipped a pagan goddess, as a church. Isn't that interesting? I mean, it's a good thing that that was only in the first century because there's no pagans today that worship in church buildings. Well, that's right. Yes, there is. Brethren, there are no excuses. There are no excuses for you to continue going to a pagan building. They are pagan buildings. That's where they came from. Well, our building doesn't... Our building... But, 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 but... Hey, if God is for what you're doing, why didn't he write it in the book? Again, I've dealt with this thing with these church building idolaters, and they'll say, well, it just kind of came about later. The Bible gives you the accurate prophecies for the book of Revelation in the future, implantable microchips, the mark in the hand or in the forehead. The whole world uh, looks at the, the, two dead, uh, the bodies of the two dead witnesses in Revelation. I believe it's chapter 11. So you have satellite television prophesied. But God couldn't prophesy that Christians were going to build buildings and call them churches. He couldn't tell you to do that in his book. It's just kind of an afterthought. No, you see, the fact of the matter is there were people in the first century that were calling pagan temples churches. Nothing has changed. Pagans are the ones that worship in church buildings. They are pagan structures. And don't give me this thing, well then we'll turn a pagan structure into something for the glory of God. You can't do that. They're not going to do that. You just make your excuses. Put them down in the comment section. Hang on to your idols. Just we're just going to keep doing this thing, brother. We're just going to keep doing it. We're going to keep we're going to keep at it. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit will convict you if you are saved. I mean, I went to church buildings for years and years and years, and I was involved and very, you know, in the in crowd, you know, in the pastor's inner circle and all this other stuff. And I never felt right. I always felt there's something wrong here. I don't know what it is. There's just something wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And the first time I heard about church buildings being pagan in their origin, I accepted it and left the first day, right? No, I fought it, like a lot of you do. But you know what? As time went by, the Lord made it clearer and clearer and clearer. You can't serve the Lord 100% in faith and practice. You cannot serve Him 100% faithfully and attend a church building someplace. You can't do it. That's why there's so much strife in those places. That's why there's sex perversion in those places. That's why there's the double standards in those places. Act one way in church and another way out of church. You know it goes on. You know it goes on. And yet you won't repent, will you? You're just going to hold on to that thing with a death grip and just refuse to submit yourself to God's perfect word. You know, what you ought to do probably if you're a King James only type Baptist, maybe you ought to start using one of these nice friendlier versions over here from the Vatican. One that won't uh, condemn your church building from the mouth of a pagan back in the first century, calling a pagan temple a church. Get a Bible that says, where he changes it and says it's a temple. Then you can say, well, bless God, we don't worship in a temple, we worship in a good old fashioned, old fashioned church. That's what I'd recommend for you if you're one of these uh, Baptists, these Bathlicks, Catholic Baptist. If you're a Bathlick and you refuse to give up your idolatrous building, use a new version. That way it covers it up. It doesn't condemn a church. It just says temple. Absolutely disgusting.